Welcome back, guys. Uh, th this is going to be a fun episode because in this episode, I'm going to try and build the most efficient factory possible. I think this. I think this is the most effect efficient, coolest as well, pos uh, factory possible. We'll see. Uh, somebody pointed out that there's still some other research that I can do. So I've just switched this line from uh, from shipping out capacitors to shipping capacitors into my research bays. And hopefully they'll start up soon. Right, so let's go over here. This factory, uh, it's kind of funny. This factory layout, uh, I've been working on this for like the last three hours and my brain is melting with all the permutations that I've worked out. I've actually realized that this layout of 24 refineries like this using crate makers is actually the highest producing factory that you can make. And the reason for that is that there is a limit on factory size, which I've only just found out. I'm still learning about this game. If I come over here, the biggest factory that you can have is 20 by 20. See, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter how much further I move out, it's 20 by 20. And in order to do what I want to do, this factory would need to be um, 23 wide to produce as much as this. So what I'm going to do is produce is do two factories, which are eleven tiles wide. So in total, they'll be uh, they'll be like twenty two tiles wide, and then there'll be a tile in the middle, so twenty three. All right. So that's what we're going to do. Let's knock this down. Oh, I keep going to I keep going to delete fac factories with the bulldozer. Demolish this factory. Get rid of it. Yes. Boom. And there it goes. <laughs> Scary, isn't it? Demolishing a factory like that. It's like, oh my god. Uh, let's get rid of all the power, all the lines. So this is my optimum factory size, which is 12 wide by 14 deep. And I'm going to put in a second one, which is going to go there. Uh, now this needs to be, let's see. Uh, that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And literally, I can only just fit them in. Like, I'm right, I'm right up to the cliff here. And right up to this, uh, this coal mine there. And it's, it's going to mess with me a little bit when I'm rooting stuff out. But, I, like, I'll manage. I'll manage somehow. Okay, so, let's put the first line in. And we'll take I'm going to start this. off with my minecart lines. So, my minecart lines would go from there, like that. So that would be that would be as far up as the minecarts need to go because I want to be able to bring in uh, minecart lines from down here and I want to be able to loop them around uh, either to run loops or to run a single line in and then be able to extend the line out the other side. So that's that. We're then going to go with a container and I'm going to move that in one tile. And it needs one space there because we need to put a, uh, a sucker upper in. Then we're going to have a second container there. And that is the width of the line. So it's it's two big tiles and two small tiles. So eight eight small tiles wide. We then have a, um, a putter downer, which is going to go there. And the, uh, the sucker upper would go. You can put it like wherever you like because... These two would be linked together so that you've got double the storage. So these these hold 40, so that means this can hold 80, which should be fine for, um, for, for any line, really. And this, you'll see that not only is this like the smallest footprint possible, um, the most optimum uh, in terms of uh, it cost efficiency, but it's also the most flexible. So um, I'll show you like the flexibility when you add a second line. Uh, but let's get this done first. So, what do I want to do then? I don't want to leave um, three squares. Yeah, three squares. So, one, two, three. And then I'm going to have my refiners going in. So, one, two, three. And then there'll be uh, uh, one, two space. And then one, two, three. That'll be the next line going in there. And the next line simply repeats. So, you would have a container there container there those two would be linked together 
Now, what this means is that if I'm running iron through this one and coal through this one, okay, that's fine, right? But if I decided that I actually wanted to, to put four of these in, which I do, like have four production lines, then I can have these two running iron, these two running coal, and I can link them together like that. Or if I wanted to, if I wanted to have them all running the same product, then I can just have all of these linked. I can run one or multiple lines in, and as they fill one, they fill all of them. So this has got um, really good flexibility from that perspective. Right, let's do, let's do the, uh, the step conveyors, because this is kind of fun. So this is not going to use a, a crate maker in the, in the final usage. So we're going to we're going to put some crates onto the line, and then the crate maker will be removed, and it, the, the crates will be recycled. So the crates will come back down a return line there. Okay, this return line is going to go round underneath the uh, the putter downer. That's going to fill up the crates, and then it's going to go across to there and turn that way. This is kind of important, and then it's going to go across to the middle refiner, so like that, and then it's going to go into that middle refiner. Then we're going to have one step conveyor going into there and two step conveyors going into there. Right, then we get our transfer clause and we'll set up, we're going to move crates, so the crates are coming down here into the, this refiner. We're going to move one across to there and we're going to move one across to there. This one is going to be set to skip every two crates. This is going to be set to skip every one crate. All right. So what about the other end? Okay. We are going to go with, let me see, uh, step conveyor. We are going to have one conveyor there, two conveyors there, and then this is going to go out four and turn. Come on, turn. There we go. And then that is going to be linked to that. So... This is the sm this is the sm this is the smallest footprint that you can have because the container that uh, that we're going to have is going to go there. Oh no, not there. There, right? And then we have a um, a sucker upper. So one of those which goes there, and that's so the crates come out full. And then this is going to suck, uh, empty the crates, suck it up, put it in here, and then it can be distributed. All right, so we need a couple more transfer claws going in. We will have a transfer claw to move everything from this line onto this line, and then from everything from this line onto this line. All righty. Oh, man. Kind of, kind of complicated, but at the same time, kind of elegant. All righty. So... And that is it. Now, how do you prime this? Well, so, like, how do you get crates onto this? Well, what we do is we start off by removing that, and our crate maker can just be put on there. And what we'll do is we'll run it till this has produced nine crates. We let nine crates get put into the system, and then we remove the crate maker, right? And put the uh, put the container back in here, and that's it. And then it'll just run permanently so perma crates okay so uh let's put uh, let's put that back in and uh, that goes there all right cool okay so that's fine we've um so we've shipped in for example coal we've refined it right uh and, and somewhere else in the factory we're going to be producing iron right so and then we want to combine it together or it might be iron and gold or coal and gold like whatever permutation you want. Well, now we're going to have to put in combiners. So let's get our combiners sorted out. This is going to have to output to a, um, a remote connector. Now, let's see. I, I think I've actually got enough room that I could move this over one and have this coming out the side. But it wouldn't work for the other lines. So there's no point doing it. So we'll run our connector out this way. Uh, and I'll put like orange on just for the sake of argument. Okay. Okay, so that is our four lines put in. 
Okay, this next part almost had me completely stumped and I thought I was going to have to make the factory an extra tile wide, which would have been all, all wasted space apart from one small tile. And I'll show you why. It's this, this took some puzzling out, let me tell you. So let's see, uh, we want to put in our combiners next. So combiners. We have a, a three space in between each of these, and I need to put in six of these. Why do I need six combiners? Well, each each line is has got six refiners. Okay, so we're producing six of each uh, element, so like six coal or six iron, which then need to be combined. So we need, and the, and the timings are about the same. These produce one every 10-ish seconds and the combiner uh, combines every 10-ish seconds. So if we're producing six here, we need six combiners. So uh, that and that, okay. Oh well, this is all looking good so far. And then we'd want a transfer tube and then we want our combiner. Okay, so we flip that combiner around. So our first combiner would go there and our second combiner would go there. And then in between, each one of these has to have a transfer tube and then one of these blue output remote connectors uh, which would be going to our eventual output oh which is awesome until you get right to the end and then you find out that this last one which would go there has room for the transfer tube but we can't get the remote connector in there and seriously, I was thinking, oh my God, my plan is all ruined. Uh, but I had a little play around and this is what I came up with. Uh, let's get rid of you. I mean, we've got a one tile space in between each one of these. And I thought if I could just get one tile back. So what I thought was, hang on a second. What if I flip this, uh, this around, all right? So if I had, if I had, blue output, transfer tube going into there, and then I had the uh, the combiner feeding into there. Okay, well that saved me my tile, but then how would I feed it? Because this is now out of line with this. Um, and I, I haven't got room to put in uh, a large container, but actually I have, right? Now, if you look at this, right, I'd need, I'd need a space to have one of these uh, output tubes and that's gonna that's gonna be over that isn't it now yeah, well huh. what I found was after a lot of playing around that if I get a large container and put it there it all works we can feed because all of these need to be connected together just like all the all the refined coal will be going in one side all the refined iron would be going in the other side and obviously this needs to be mirrored on the other side. So we'd need uh, an input there and an input there. That goes into there. Yep. And then um, we'd want small container there. And uh, we'd need a large container there. But then, because we've saved that one tile, that's all we need. So then we can go back to our regular arrangement. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And have one, two, three. Uh, one, two, one, two, three, four. Oh, no, what am I doing? Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> what am I doing? I don't know. My, seriously, my brain is melting with this. This has been so confusing. Um, so hang on a second. Uh, let's put my, you know what? Let's put the combiners in. Make sure I'm doing this right. <laughs> it's not, it's not easy for a bear of very little brain like me. It's not easy. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So then we can have the combiners. This combiner can't put that there, obviously. So that's going to have to go that way around. But if we put them all in that way round like that, then if I get my output tubes 
I go there, 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 and there. Whew, man. Uh, we can get our blue output remote connectors. There, 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 and there. And we have got a line of six combiners. <laughs> oh my lord. Whew. Can you see why that gave me some trouble? Because it did. That gave me a bit of trouble. But you know what? I'm so happy when I figured it out. Uh, this goes around here. In there. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. And that. Oh, no. Missed one. There. And that is our combiners all sorted out. Okay. And then, obviously, we want to say over here, this is going to be uh, our orange input. So these ones are going to feed into this line of containers here. And then this is going to be our green input. So uh, these two here. Now, these two obviously need to be green remote connectors. Uh, where's my remote connectors? Here we go. So this is going to be outputting into the green feed and that one. So this could be iron and coal or iron and gold or gold and coal or whatever. Orange feeds into here, green feeds into here. It's all combined. Right. Now we need to actually uh, output it in a form that our rockets can take. And obviously our rockets need crates. Now if we we're outputting to a train, right, it, this would be easy because literally we just dump it into uh, mine carts, ship it out the door. So you can actually have this a couple of tiles smaller if, uh, if you wanted to output to trains. If you want to output to rockets, then this is what we need to do. Now, because I've got like these in the way here and these in the way here, I'm going to try and, and scrunch my output up a little bit over to the middle. So it'll be here on this side, here on this side. So what do I want to do? I want one of those with a, uh, uh, a, a crate maker. Yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> and I have this, this, this feeding into the side so that it gives me the most space, right? So, how do we want this? Uh, we want one, two, three, four spaces in between. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, remember, we only need four of these outputs uh, because we've got, we've got four lines, effectively. So, yeah, four outputs. Even though it's kind of weird because you've got, well, hang on, because we've got four of these, like we've got four groups of refiners, but we've got six and then four. That plays with my brain, but it's right. It is right. <laughs> I promise you it's right. Uh, I swear to God, my brain, right, after, after three hours of trying to figure this out, my brain feels like it's been through a blender. It's just like mush. So that goes there, goes there, goes there. Right, then we want uh, the rest of our crate makers, which go on the side, flipped around, there, and there, and there. Hooray. Okay. Now, now I could, I could just put, um, like, one unload station there, right? Because if my claws, if my, because uh, I'm going to have um, track claws, bringing the stuff out to the rockets. If my, if everything is running optimally, then I could just put that there, and like as soon as that comes out, it would get picked up and shipped off. But the reality is that you want to give yourself a little bit of leeway, and uh, and we've got the room to do it anyway. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll give ourselves just a little bit of room. So I'm going to bring that out, turn it around, and come across, now let's see. Uh, I'm going to bring it out to there, I think. Bring it out, one, two, three. Yes, that's right. Then I'm going to put an unload station there. And then I'm going to put an unload station there. Oh, yeah. And then we're going to do the same for this. So the unload stations would go there and turn around there. Now, I, I mean, I could, I could put these onto the same unload station, couldn't I? But I think I'm going to run it like this. I think I'm going to run it like this. Um, right, so. 
what do I want to do? I want to take that out to there and take that out to there. Now, I suppose, um, I mean, obviously, I could turn this sharper and have it going across there and save myself a tile, but I can't save myself like a whole extra factory tile. So there's kind of no point. So you can kind of really set this up like however the hell you want, to be honest, on the output. Okay, having done that, we're then going to want uh, claw train tracks, uh, which are going to be running at the very least uh, across those four. Well, I mean, in, the, uh, in fact, not even. Not even. The, they have to cross across those two. But other than that, they could go straight out the door. And then we want uh, two pickups, <clears throat> which is going to be a pickup stop there and a pickup stop there. And like I've said, I mean, I could, I could unite these onto a single line. Um, but I'm, I'm, I've struggled with, I've, I've been trying to think of which is the, the most efficient way to do this. Is it with, is it with two pickups or a single pickup? And I think it probably depends on on how you've positioned your uh, your rockets. Now I want I want four rockets out here, and like depending on the exact positioning, I I could put like these two squares here. I mean I could I could change these conveyor belts so that they're moved over a bit more or whatever. Uh, one or two pickups. I mean to be honest, I don't really think it makes any difference. So I suppose, I suppose from a pure efficiency perspective, taking everything into consideration, probably one is better because you've only got to pay for one pickup stop instead of two, I guess. But it's, um, I mean, it is such a minor detail. So we want pick up there, pick up there. And then it just gets shipped out to the rockets. So, um, Okay, you know what? Should we should we do it? Should we do it? I think we probably should. So this is going to depend where my doors are in the factory as to exactly where I want these positioned. So if I've got my doorways, oh, you know what? There and there is is absolute perfection. Is this one good? No, that one needs to be slightly different. Oh, it it would be, wouldn't it? Uh, I could actually do with like with like this being just moved up. You know what? What I'll do if I put that one there uh, and that one there, then I can actually improve this by taking that off, get rid of those, and then put in uh, what do I want to put in. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Uh, unload station there. And flip that around there and step conveyor on that side goes over one further hooray okay now that means that I can have my claw track and if if you're balancing the efficiency of two systems you want the claw trains to, to be the most efficient one for sure uh, that's gonna go out the door there that one's gonna come in like Right, come up there. The same with that one goes out there. That one comes in there. Two pickups going in there and there. And that, and that is it. That is it. Now, the, the most efficient way to deliver this into the rockets is going to be the shortest possible claw track. So we'd want this claw track going out to an, uh, a load station. So these need to be unload stations, and then this needs to be a load station, and the closest I can put it is there. So we'll flip it around that way, and right, it actually only needs to be one long, because we can get a rocket launch pad, flip it around, and put it right there. Like, that's it. 
And then uh, we finish our claw track off by going out, turn, round, come on, to there. And then we'll just have a single drop off point, which is there. And they are actually color coded. So this is this is a gray arrow on a black background. This is a black arrow on a gray background. So that's it. That is the whole line. And that, I think, is the most efficient the factory can be. Now, you could, in theory, save yourself one tile uh, on the length of the factory if you decided that you only wanted a straight track going through. Right? So in instead of coming in from the back and curving and going out, you just ran a track like straight in from, from the side. Right? Um, and then if you squished this back one and then made this go out there rather than going out one and going across there, you could actually save one tile from the factory. But personally, I think it's better to be able to have multiple lines coming into the factory. See here, I could have four lines, four, uh, four mine track lines coming into the factory to feed these rather than uh, like having maybe like one from that side but no, you know that would be, i don't think that would work i don't think that would work well you, you could if you had relatively short trains because you'd only if i had if i had that one filling and that one filling or maybe maybe that one then i could run that out a little bit i could run this one out a little bit but you'd only be able to run four or five uh, cars on the track. And with some of these lines, we're going to want a lot more cars than that. So I think, I think the, add, add the extra tile, add the 14th tile and be able to curve your tracks around and have them, uh, have them looping. Right. So all I've got to do now is, um, is finish this off. And here it is all completed. So I've, um, I've, I've just got the lines running in for now. I, I haven't optimized them. Uh, I will do some playing around with the lines once I get the second factory up and running. But I just want to, I, for now, I just want to focus on this factory and nothing else. There goes one of our rockets. <laughs> the other one's loaded up. All right, should we take a look? So uh, when I first started the factory, I ran it until I had uh, 12 crates running on each line and if we have a look around you should see look there's crate waiting crate waiting crate waiting and then that just goes ready for that one to go in that one gets stacked up that one gets stacked up that one gets stacked up perfect absolutely perfect so um, I had to I had to make a couple of changes so I, I knew I was going to have to do this, uh, move this one over, because just because this blooming cliff's here, I can't have this going in through the right doors. So this is actually a door further over than I want it, which means that I have to move this over one, which is a pain. But So I can't have these linked together, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, this is all absolutely perfect and fine. I don't need, I don't actually need that. So I get rid of, go on, I'll get rid of it. So... So we're just filling that one. But I could have another line running in here and may well do. You know what? I know I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it just to kind of remind me. A sucker upper. Yes. Goes in there. Right. So uh, so that is all working. Fine. Do you want to see it? Like, So first crate goes into there. Second crate gets moved to there. Third crate will get moved over to that line. And then all the crates that come out get put back onto this line, get sucked up into here. The crates are emptied and go around to be reused. That goes into the orange, which is connected to the coal. Over here, we've uh, it's going into. And I, I changed it so that before I had I had two of these, and I realised I didn't need two. I only needed one there because the positioning's exactly perfect to just have a sucker upper pulling into the second one and then f and then um, feeding into the um, into the orange line this feeds into the green line the orange and the green feed into our combiner system 
which is, I've got to say, visually fairly boring. There's not a lot going on. Here, it's like frantic. Here, it's just like peaceful. So serenity going on. And then I had to redesign this because I, I don't know what the hell happened to my brain. But of course, these, the in the, before I changed it, they weren't connected and you can only have one blue container. So they've got to be connected together. So, uh, so this is what I came up with. And of course, fits nicely into the space. You could, um, I mean, you could do without this one and have this connected to, to this one and this connected to this one. But, you know, it's always, the other thing, I mean, I, you could, you could just have one output port. There, there, there are one or two things you could do to make it different, but I don't know whether it really makes it any more efficient. Now, what I want to look at, so you're just leaving, you've got 30 on board. I was, I was looking at this and thinking, you know what? We could probably output this on one rocket. And that would be very easy because we could just run these lines together uh, into, into like one, have one claw track, one rocket. But let's face it, who doesn't want more rockets? So yeah, there you go. That is my proposal for the most efficient factory that you can have. And you put two, these two together and oh my god they are going to output some stuff. There goes another rocket. So this one gets back and it's got... Okay. And it's got like 20 waiting for it. So yeah, I'm thinking... Well, there's another load going in. So, yeah, I'm thinking... I don't, I don't know whether one rocket would quite do it. I think we'd start getting stuff backing up with one rocket. I, I don't know. It's so it's borderline. It's got. It, uh, I don't know. I don't know. But there you go. That's it. Um, we're going to leave it there for this episode. Can't wait to see your comments on this. And uh, yeah, next episode we'll be putting in. Uh, I'll put in the second factory. I'm going to do some optimization on my lines. Uh, get everything nicely tidied up. Everything running really smoothly. And then I think. With both of these running, I mean, we, we'll, we'll obviously we'll easily beat this thirty thousand target. I, ooh, I don't think we'll quite get to the forty thousand. We should, we should get like a thirty percent boost. So we should be able to do something like, I don't know, around thirty-five maybe. So we're gonna have to do a little bit more. I don't know, maybe some, maybe some more oil, maybe some more oil, and ship that out. What do you think? Leave me your comments. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you in the next one, guys. And I hope you're enjoying the game. Peace out.